Hey guys, it's Nick with the Bass Hookup. Right now I'm just getting ready for the windy Wednesday nighter. In what, two days? I'm gonna go out there fishing with my eight year old. Just have a good time. Go fish against Bearded Bassin and Pops if Pops is back. Um, go see how we do. And my eight year old, I know he's, he's hoping we do well because he's looking forward to getting some money of course. And uh, you know, while I'm getting ready, I'm gonna make a video for you guys all about striper fishing the Delta. And I want to preface this by saying we're no striper experts. We've caught a lot of good striper in the years of fishing the Delta, but um, you know, we don't guide, nothing like that. But I want to share all the striper knowledge that we've gotten over the years with you guys. I'm going to go over some techniques, some spots, when we catch them, what time of year, and kind of why they, why they come into the system and when they come into the system. And Hopefully, give you guys some good takeaways on that. So while I'm getting ready out here for the Wednesday nighter, let's go inside and let's do this striper video. All right, now that we're inside, we're gonna go over, you know, this little slideshow I put together. I'm a visual learner. I like to be able to see, you know, <laughs> what people are talking about. If I'm talking about baits, I wanna be able to see them. If I'm talking about areas of the river, I wanna be able to see them. Fish movement, I wanna be able to see it. So I put together a real simple slideshow. We're going to go over, you know, three, well, actually quite a few different techniques to catch these striper. But first, I want to start out by going over how these stripers move in and out of the system and when they move in and out. There's always resident striper that live throughout the whole system, right? By resident striper, I mean they're in there all year round. They, they, they find a, ha a happy place in there and they're swimming around there, you know, year in, year out, eating bait. But there are large runs of striper that come from the ocean, come from out west, that come in, spawn, and move out. And they move in and out in mostly the spring. So I want to say anywhere from, um, you know, February, March, April, and then again in the fall, which could happen in September, October. Um, September, October, November, December, and January, great times to catch fish. Maybe not numbers of fish, but great times to catch big stripers. So let's just get right into this little slideshow. So here we have an overlay or a map of the whole system, pretty much the whole system. If you look all the way up to the top, this is Liberty Island uh, coming down Rio Vista. The Sacramento River winds through here, um, and then out west, you have Benicia, Sassoon Bay, Grizzly Bay, and of course out here, the Ocean, San Francisco Bay, and then you come in here, and this is Big Break, uh, all the way down to uh, Clifton Court, Four Bay down here, and then east to Stockton, the Port of Stockton, to pretty much everything. But what I'm going to cover is the main, what I call the main areas of river that these stripers, the majority of the stripers, are going to come through during the spring and fall runs. Okay, the majority, if you want, if you think of, you know, salmon, the salmon come in to spawn. Most of them come in from out here. They come in and go up the Rio Vista. Some come up through the San Joaquin River and up the McCallamy Rivers, and make their way up the Sacramento all the way to the American. They're using these larger areas of the river to navigate up to where they spawn. Stripers do the same thing. Now, of course, there are salmon that, you know, maybe take a wrong turn and go down one of these little sloughs, and you could find actually some little pods of them that are in the back of dead-end sloughs and stuff, kind of get lost, and you could catch them. Same thing with stripers. And there's also the resident stripers, like I already talked about. For the most part... We're concentrating on these areas where the big concentrations of stripers are going to move through. And the bigger or more fish there are in that area, the better chances you have of catching those fish. So, right now, we have the shad spawn. The shad are coming up the river. They're making their way in. During this time, shad are bait for stripers. Even the big, big ones. Big 30, 40 pound, 50 pound stripers come up and eat those shad. And a lot of the small one, smaller ones, I say smaller, 5 to 10, 15 pounds, those stripers, they also follow those up. 
So right now we have the shad. They kind of all do the same, the salmon, shad, and stripers. They're sitting out here, you know, they're sitting out in the ocean. And they make their way up the rivers, and they use the same, you know, the same sections of rivers to make their way up. For the most part, the San Joaquin River here, and up the McCallamy, and then the main stretch that they use because it, it just, it's a straight shot all the way up to the American, and all the way up to Feather and Sacramento is Rio Vista. Up through Liberty, some get stuck over there in the deep water channel if you keep going up Prospect. And then if you go up to Sacramento, they make their way up to the American. So you have the shad coming in, right? The shad are coming in, and it's a bait fish. So what else comes in? The stripers start to come in. They're sitting out here, and they're just waiting. You know, they're waiting to spawn, waiting to do their thing. But some of them also are going to feed on these shad on the way up. So the stripers start to come in and feed on these shad. So just for perspective, let me go back. They're making their way through the system along with the shad. It's one big ecosystem, right? Like I said, all these fish are using these same waterways to navigate up essentially to the northern sections of the river, the Feather, the upper Sacramento, the American rivers. They're making their way up there to spawn. And then at some point they're going to come back down. You want to catch them while they're moving up or while they're moving down or in and out of the system. So right now, a lot of stripers moving in the system, they're moving from west to east, are most likely, right now because it's a little later, they're going to be way up here in the system somewhere. Somewhere up here. Earlier, a month ago or so, two months ago, they'd be down here near Big Break, Antioch Bridge, uh, Rio Vista, those areas, those areas were doing really well on stripers. A lot of numbers, a lot of big stripers. Where do they go? They keep on moving up river. So if you want to catch those stripers now, you need to move north. Okay? Or if the stripers are moving this way, you need to move east. For the most part, I would move north. So this is just give you a little perspective of how the striper movement works in the California Delta in the river here okay so they're coming out from the ocean they're moving up and they're looking to go up north up the feather american upper sacramento and they're making their way there all right so how do you catch them one way great way to cover a ton of water of course is trolling and there's a lot of techniques to troll i'm going to just leave this screen here for a little bit if you guys want to come back to it uh you could you know, you could look at it. You could read all the all the different detail on each one of these trolling, you know, lures, baits, whatever you want to call it. So you have your shallow runners, which most of the people troll them at a faster speed. Okay, um, I I troll the. We usually troll them. We're trolling out of a bass boat, so we're usually trolling of speeds of two and a half, three miles an hour. Um, and doesn't we troll with the current against the current? Sometimes it makes a difference, but you know we do both starting out to see which way uh, those stripers want it coming. Sometimes if you troll right into their face, so the the fish are facing up current. So if you want to troll into their face, you're going to troll with the current, and your bait's going to be coming right by their face. So they either got to react to it, or maybe they don't want it. Or if they're acting a little slower, and you you want to troll against the current the same way they're going then the bait's going to move a lot slower and it's going to come from behind them and move up into their face and they could chase it down and eat it or they could eat it right when that thing comes by them uh, or they could track that bait a lot better as opposed to coming down current right into their face if they want to track it now that fish has to spin around and go with the current and chase it down with the current and that happens too so you have the shallow runners, which you're going to troll on the shallower flats, which there's a ton of stripers in shallow water. You know, they get a lot shallower than you, you know, some people would believe. We catch a lot of our bigger stripers in anywhere from three foot of water and less, three feet to six inches of water. So 
Those are great baits. You troll them at a higher speed, getting that reaction bite. Those stripers are up on those flats feeding. And again, after I go through these slides, we're going to go look at the map and I'll show you some areas to uh, apply each one of these techniques. And then over here you have the deep, deep divers, the rebel, the jointed rebel we always use. The, another good one is the P-line predator deep dive, a lot like the rebel. Um, and I like a lot of, you know, the blue back, blue chrome with orange belly and fire tigers, bright colors were, seem to work good for us whenever we're trolling. A lot of bright colors. And you don't have to have, the good thing about it, like I said, we're trolling out of a bass boat. You don't have to have a boat set up just for trolling. You don't need downriggers for stripers. You don't need any of that. We're running, like it says here, let out 70 to 120 feet of line. We're running straight 20 pound fluorocarbon or monofilament. The reason is we don't use braid because you do want some stretch. When those fish hit, and a lot of times they hit, and it feels like you're snagged. You don't want to rip those hooks out. With braid, it has zero stretch, and you could rip the hooks out, especially if they just get skin hooked. They'll hit it. You'll rip the hook right out of their skin. The fish is gone. So we use braid or, uh, I'm sorry, we use monofilament <laughs> or fluorocarbon. Um, fluoro also has low stretch, but, you know, to be honest, we grew up just trolling monofilament, 20-pound monofilament, tons of stretch. And you're moving at a fast speed, so those fish are going to get hooked. You don't have to worry about that. Um, so, again, you could read through this. I don't want to go through it word for word or anything like that. But these are a couple baits that you would use for shallow trolling and deep trolling. And one key thing to put on these baits is this worm, a trick worm, some sort of straight tail worm. This was always a key, I feel like, for us getting bit. It looks, it looks funny, right? But this trick worms, like a six inch worm, something like that. Basically, you're gonna take the hook here, look at your hook, and whatever hook is facing up, which would be this one, you would just run this hook right through the nose of this worm. So the worm's hanging off the back like this. But when that thing's going through the water, the worm is just kind of making an S pattern behind this bait. And it catches a ton more fish. We've tried without, you know, putting one bait out without the worm, one bait out with it. They always hit the one with the worm. Worm colors, we usually do white or we do like a bright color, like a methylate trick worm. And if you look on Tackle Warehouse at Zoom trick worms, you'll see methylate. Um, also the pink color, like the bubble gum color. So makes a big big difference if you haven't been trolling with a worm on the back of your jointed rebels or whatever you're trolling um deep and usually it does make deep it makes a difference shallow um you could catch them without the worm but the deep i definitely throw it with the worm on the back of it that's key all right let's move on here what do i have next oh chasing stripers this is what we like to do most of the time so chasing stripers, what I mean by that is uh, you're not trolling. You're not just, you know, trolling certain stretches of Brent bank or anything like that. You're actively looking for stripers, kind of like bass fishing. Bass fishing, we're always moving spots, looking for the active feeding bass. When you're chasing stripers, I'm doing the same thing. I'm looking for shallow flats, uh, you know, lots of current ripping through a certain area, Maybe there's a break in a levee or something like that. I'm going out early morning, evening, throwing top water like the pencil popper. I'm um, looking for birds. And right here, actually, let me throw this clip in here. Right here, this is from a few years ago. The fish were on the San Joaquin River heavy. You could see by the amount of birds that there's activity there, right? There's a ton of bait. Those birds are diving down getting bait. And it was drop after drop, and this lasted for a month and a half or so. And we were going out there a lot. And we were doubling, tripling up. And these stripers weren't small. They were all, you know, 5 to 25 pounds. And we were just using a spoon to catch them. It's the best way to catch them when they're schooling. 
is a spoon. A lot of times you'll see the, the smaller stripers will come up to the surface chasing the bait. The bigger ones, they're smarter. They're down deep. They're just waiting for the bait to get pegged and fall down to them. And they're eating the bait that's falling down to them. So you get underneath them by vertically jigging a spoon like this. I call it a spoon or a lead jig. Um, and then on those shallow flats, you know, we're throwing the fish trap, great bait. And again, you're slow rolling it. Okay, we're throwing a lot of this stuff on just 20 pound fluorocarbon, 20 pound monofilament. When I'm throwing a fish trap in two, three feet of water, you want to make bottom contact. You want to just crawl it along. You're crawling it along and they hit it. One key, when they hit it, you'll feel a dunk and do not set the hook. Keep reeling until that thing just comes tight and snug, then set the hook. A lot of times they come up to kill it with their mouth shut. Same thing with topwater. Don't set the hook right away. Wait until you feel that fish tugging back because they will come up, any of these baits, hit it, dunk, dunk, nothing. You just keep winding slow. Don't set the hook. Keep winding slow. Dunk, nothing. Keep winding slow. Usually second, third, fourth, sometimes fifth hit is when they actually open their mouth and eat it. That's the number one key I have for you guys. If you're chasing stripers with baits, casting baits, do not, do not jump the gun on the hook set. Just keep winding it slow. Wait for your rod to load up and you feel that fish on there. Then go ahead and set the hook. Same thing with throwing these glide baits. A lot of times they come up with their mouth shut and wham, hit it. But they're not trying to eat it yet. They're just trying to stun it. And they turn back around and they'll eat it. And when they eat it, you'll know it because your rod will just double over and they'll be on there. You don't really even have to set the hook. They'll hook themselves because they are aggressive fish. And we'll go over spots for this too. So that's chasing stripers. Next one, grew up doing this. It's a lot of fun. I need to take, take my kids out more often and do this. Is bait fishing for stripers. This will get, you know, if you have kids, a ton of bites. A ton of action you know they could see that bite on the rod tip non-stop there's so many little stripers I have a little diagram here of how we like to set up you know our, our sliding sinker rig I don't necessarily always use a circle hook um, it's a good idea if you're if you're don't want to keep all the stripers keeps from gut hooking them um, and then the sliding slinker you know we use a uh, any type of sliding a sinker. It doesn't have to be a pyramid sinker. For the most part in the Delta, a two and three ounce sinker, a two ounce and a three ounce sinker will be good enough to get you by in any type of current or spot from a boat, from a boat. You might have to upsize it to like a four ounce from the bank because a lot of times the current will grab your bait, your weight and everything and your line will just end up, you know, five foot off the bank 100 feet down <clears throat> sometimes it's not bad but if you want to keep it out there a little bit you know further you got to upsize the weight but for bait for bait fishing off a boat one thing well let's start off by the baits so i have to me the main baits you're going to use live shiner if you want to go buy live shiners of course that's probably going to be your best you're going to get the most bites on a live shiner most keeper bites, right? Another bait that works really, really good is live mud suckers. You could catch these in the river by using little bluegill, you know, size 12, 14 hooks with a night crawler on it. You could catch some of these guys, use them, or you could buy them. These live mud suckers, you're going to rig up on this. We use this same rig for everything. And maybe a lighter sinker, like a one ounce, but you'll just drag that rig around. If you have a trolling motor on your boat, just like Carolina rig fishing for a bass or something like that, you're gonna drag these guys around and they work excellent when the cold, uh, in those cold months like December and January. Down deep, fishing current breaks. Um, when one grabs a hold of a mud sucker, it's usually always a keeper striper. I don't think I've ever caught a 21, 22 inch striper on a mud sucker. They've all been you know, eight pounds to 40 pounds on that. A lot of like just, lot like halibut fishing, right, out in the bay. But you get some big stripers on that. And to me, that's a 
cold water bait. That's when it works the best. Uh, it's the go-to. Another one is cut shad. Um, cut shad is a great bait for better sized stripers too. You don't get a lot of bites, little bites, so it eliminates a lot of those little, I mean little, when I say little, there's like six inch stripers, eight inch stripers that just eat your sardine right off, right when you throw it out there. If you want to eliminate that and just get some bigger bites, sardines are great, I mean, pff, sardine. Shad, cut shad's a great way to go. It'll eliminate a lot of those tiny bites. Um, another one most common that we would always use it's cheap is just cut sardine there's different ways to cut it i'm not going to get into that we would fillet it and then like weave the hook in and out to try to keep it on and uh it gets mushy it falls off but it gets bit immediately it's the smell and we've caught you know multiple 30 to 40 pound stripers just on cut sardine so cut sardine probably the most readily available you could buy it frozen you could go to a tackle shop buy it you know maybe sometimes they have it fresh but for the most part frozen fillet it throw it out there if you're around any sort of fish doesn't matter what size you'll get bit on that the one key i have for you guys on this technique is to use this kind of reel something with a bait runner so this lever you could click it if you're tight lining these baits you cast out you put your rod in a rod holder and you're tight lining it this is essential what it allows you to do is you click this on set your drag right so that when the fish bites it you're going to have this button's going to be engaged so essentially your your bell is open when the fish bites it it could swim off of it and it doesn't feel the tension from the rod and drop it you're going to let the fish just run off with it and my dad, he used to tell us, you know, count to five seconds slow while that line just pill and drag. The fish bites it and it's going, zzz, zzz, it's just taking off and you count one to five. And then you engage the real handle and they're on there. And usually it's a big one. The little shakers that just are tap, 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 tapping your rod tip. I, of course, as a kid, I always set the hook on those. But if you don't want those, you don't even need to set the hook on them. If it's a big one it's going to just take off with it. It's either going to slack line you, it's going to swim at you, your line goes slack, or it's going to eat it and it's going to swim off. And if you have one of these, it'll be able to take that bait and run with it without filling your rod. What we would do, and I think this catches more fish and gets more of those big fish to commit to that bait, is instead of having your rod... Oh yeah, I put that. So that's what I'm talking about. If you can't see my mouse... So, um, if you can't, if, you know, instead of putting your rod in a rod holder and having the line tight, what we would always do is we would have a pole or something going across the back of your boat that you could balance your rod on. I think it's way more effective. We would also have the clicker on, engaged. So, at this point, if you could imagine your rod is in the back of the boat, it's balancing on some sort of beam back there. And when that fish bites it, the rod is balanced. So it could go down. The fish is biting it. The fish feels nothing. It's biting it. The rod's going down. And, you know, when you get a shaker, striper, the rod's literally just shaking. It's like biting it like a crappie or a bluegill would bite a nightcrawler. It's shaking. When you get a big fish, all you see is the rod. I think they come up inhale the bait and they're sitting in the current with it so they're kind of swaying back and forth and what happens is your rod goes down slow comes back up slow goes down slow and then when the fish actually swims off with it your rod just goes down just hammers straight down to the water and the, this bell's open and it's just pill and drag and you just let it pill 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 pick it up engage the reel boom fights on so that's, to me, a key thing, bait fishing. If you haven't been catching a lot of big stripers or um, missing bites, is balancing the rod. If you can't balance the rod somehow, and how we would do it is, it's, you can't do it with just your rod. You can't just put your rod on a, on a stick or something back there and it's going to balance. Easy way to solve that is, you take some you know thick red rubber bands like you get on a newspaper or something. You tie the rubber band up above the upper handle on your rod 
okay? So up above the cork area, and you find, a, just get a spot, tie the rubber band on, throw your bait out, your bait's on bottom, go tight to where your rod's like at, you know, facing up like in a, a 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock um, direction. Put your rod down on whatever you're balancing on and see if it sits right there at that angle. If you need to adjust the angle, you just move the rubber band up your rod or down your rod. And the rubber band, it just acts as a as a, a barrier, a sticky part right there where you could balance it up against that sharp angle on, on like a wood beam or if you're using a metal like rod holder or something, it just holds it there in place so you can balance it. Without that rubber band on there, you can't balance it because it's just a graphite rod or fire, whatever you're using. It just slides. So you need the rubber band. So that's it for that. Let's go over to the map and I'll show you guys some areas that we fish that you know typically hold fish um, during April, fall time of year. And then you could apply these techniques there and hopefully you guys catch some fish. All right, so back at the river. So let's start out west and move our way in this way. And we're going to start with trolling. We're going to start with trolling because that was the first thing that came up on the slide. So it makes sense, right? <coughs> so for trolling, super popular area is the West Bank. If you guys listen to fishing reports and stuff like that, and guys say, well, I'm catching them trolling the West Bank. The West Bank, what do they mean by that? They mean this West Bank of the Sacramento River. Right in this in this area. All along, all along in this area. This is all the West Bank. And out here on Rio Vista or the Sacramento River, whatever you want to call it, it's pretty flat. But there's a channel. You can see these channel markers actually right here. A channel runs right here along the West Bank. Sometimes those stripers are in this channel, right on the edge of the channel, or sometimes they're up on the flat. So if you're listening to the report and they're catching them on those shallow running trolling baits, they're probably up on this flat. If they're catching them on the deeper diving ones, they're probably right off this break, right in this channel, either on this side of the break or this side, because over here is a big flat too. Both sides are good, but the West Bank is the most popular. We've definitely caught fish there trolling. One great spot for trolling also is this is Decker Island here. Right through here behind Decker Island is also a great spot for trolling. Sometimes the fish, you know, they're coming up here and they veer off this way and there might be a big concentration of them back behind Decker Island, Island in that area. Another great area for trolling is if you're going to troll shallow running, you know, the shallow runners is going to be all the way from the Antioch Bridge down the west bank of the San Joaquin River. All down this area, this is turns into a big flat. Um, also a big flat here. And you can follow that flat, stay in three to six, seven feet of water, and fish that all the way up. You could also troll the deep runners, you know, down this east bank, down the rock, all the way into False River here. One good stretch we'd always fish was from basically from this corner to this corner and we're trolling the deep runners back and forth from this corner to this corner sometimes that was one of our main spots also from this corner of fisherman's cut all the way up to this corner trolling this rock bank super super good we caught so many stripers trolling this just from here to here usually our bites would come from here to here or from here to here because there's a big flat right here for some reason I mean we catch one or two here but they're always at the end ends of these flats where it's deeper like here to here and here to here so there's those are a couple you know we didn't troll a lot but if we trolled it was from here to there and then if they weren't there come to this side troll here to here like I said a lot of guys troll the West Bank we also did catch a lot of fish trolling behind Decker Island in the past um, great areas to troll, but that's, that's all we would troll. So I wish I could show you more areas, 
but maybe you could look at those spots and expand from there. What I have on there next, chasing stripers, chasing stripers. So again, out here on the Sacramento River, I think of stripers a lot when I'm chasing them, a lot like bass. I'm looking for shallow weed flats that come out away. These stripers, they're ambush predators, so they like the weeds. They want to hide in the weeds. They want to hide in the wood. They're up on these flats where the current's really pushing into them hard. The bait's getting pushed into them hard, and um, they're on flats like this that come offshore. And, you know, I'm throwing the topwater bait in the morning, throwing a pencil popper. I'm throwing it in like, you know, one foot of water out to five feet of water and these flats. But the most important part of chasing stripers is, again, back to the birds, is looking for those birds. If you could find the birds, you've found the stripers. If you find active birds, you found the stripers. So always keep your head on a swivel all day and look out in the distance for those birds. If you find them, run over there to them. Another spot is... Again, chasing stripers is all going to be shallow water, shallow weed flats. So flats that come way out here, the current's going to rush into a main current areas on the main rivers like San Joaquin. We were just looking at the Sacramento. There's flats out here, you know, out in the middle. They're going to use that. They might, and the points of them are important. So right where the current's hitting the point of the flat, sorry, or the beginning of the flat, they're going to be there. That's where they're going to be in the beginning of those areas. Um, another area is back over here where we would troll. Sometimes there's big weed flats out here that are actually coming out of the water. You could hit that in the morning. They'll be just around those weed flats. Pencil popper, you know, throwing the fish trap, throwing a rattle trap, all great areas. Even coming up in here and throwing the fish trap up to the rocks, rattle trap up to the rocks. And just working it right off the rocks. Usually those stripers are, you know, a foot to five feet off those rocks. Just like you'd catch a bass. Um, and you can look all around the delta. And here you can see there's a flat, big shoal here. And there's a channel here. And it comes up on the flat. Those stripers are going to sit right on the point. The current, on incoming tide, the current's going to be coming in. Just pounding that. Pushing bait all into that. And the stripers, that's where they're going to be at. You can look all up and down the river. There's another big flat here. Stripers get on. Um, stripers get on this corner. They get on this big flat right here. Uh, there's another big flat. All this is a big flat right out here. Again, I, you know, I would start at the points. Just like a bass. How In one of our previous videos we did on catching bass in the delta, you start at the Thule points. Don't come in here and start in the middle. Most of your fish are going to be on the points. Same thing with stripers, right on the point of the flat or this side of the flat. Maybe you'll get some right up on top in the middle, but for the most part, the points are the high percentage areas, the spots where you want to start. And then breaks, where there's lots of current, like the breaks running through Little Frank's track, you know, Frank's track, where current's just pouring through this break on an incoming outgoing tide. Stripers use this area and get on bait there same same way um well while we're here this whole rock bend has been really really good in the past the current comes through false river and in, on incoming tide it just hits this bank really really hard and washes everything around this point and this back side it'll just be an eddy usually the stripers are sitting right here where this current's just pounding this flat right here along these rocks and I'm throwing the rattle trap I'm throwing mostly fish trap working it just winding it slow throwing it right up on the rocks that's important right on the rocks winding it slow letting it come down right down that rock levee and usually they hit it you know two three four feet off the bank not much farther than that um, so that's chasing stripers oh spooning in the video, those birds were all in here. For that month and a half, there were birds and bait all in this area. A ton of them. If you can't find the birds and you want to try to find some striper spooning, you want to find areas where there's a drop-off and there's current just rushing over it. 
usually the stripers will be in those areas. So, for example, um, this point, there's a light pole right here. Well, there's a, there's a break that kind of follows this shoreline and comes out like this and then goes this way. Well, when the water is coming in or out, it's really flowing right here. And it's a little bit deeper hole. Usually, you can find some stripers and spoon some stripers right there. Same thing off this point. This point comes out like a flat like that. And on this side, it's deep. On this side, it's deep. Sometimes they'll be around that. They'll be in this cut. Anywhere that it's deep and it has a lot of current. And spooning usually is the best in the fall. Um, stripers really get on bait. The water is pretty clear. And uh, the current's flowing. It's just a great time to catch them spooning. October, November, December, you know, in January you get them right here around this point, you know, coming out of Three Mile Slough, out onto the San Joaquin. The current's always just ripping around this thing. And somewhere around here, you can usually find some stripers to catch on a spoon. While I'm here, um, we're going to move to bait fishing. The mud suckers in the winter time. We look for the same spots that we would catch those spoonfish. So right here to catch those live mud sucker fish. So the big fish, same thing. Looking for if you know underwater structure. So anywhere it goes from like 10, 15 feet drops off to a channel 25. The stripers are sitting in those channels, and we're just dragging that live mud sucker by hoping that they're going to eat them. This is a good spot. We drag live mud suckers around and catch a lot of stripers. Same thing with the point over here. And if you guys have points around the river or areas that sound familiar to what I'm talking about, you could go there and try it. Because by no means have we fished all of the delta fishing for stripers. We do it, you know, periodically. Most of the time, tournament fishing takes up our, our time. Um, but... You know, we have a lot of family members and stuff that do target just stripers and do fairly well. They catch a lot of stripers, a lot of good stripers. Um, <clears throat> so those type of areas for the mud sucker, for dragging around those mud suckers. For bait fishing, it's pretty much the same. Um, we're going to, you know, you'd anchor up right around here. Uh, and if you have a graph, if you're graphing and you see some fish on the graph, Remember remember how long your anchor rope is, how deep it is, because you want to position that boat upstream from those fish to where you're casting to them. Like your boat's not sitting on them, but you're casting to the fish, right? Otherwise, you, you've anchored on them, you'll spook them, or you're casting, and you're not casting into those fish. You're casting, you know, maybe not into the hole that you wanted to be in. So just something to remember about bait fishing. But bait fishing, for the most part, is the same. Um, bait fishing all around this area, Santa Clara Shoals, has always been really good because there's a lot of striper that move in and out of here. Just a lot of striper and a lot of good striper. And the current's flowing. There's a lot of, like, humps. If you come out here and look at it on a graph, and there'll be stripers sitting in little holes. Um, really good area to bait fish. If you go north... If you go north, so right now, this time of year, one excellent place to bait fish is out in front of Clarksburg, if I could find it. So, let's see, Clarksburg, one excellent place to bait fish. We used to fish off the shore, off this side, caught a lot of 15 to 25 pound stripers bait fishing from the shore. You can't bait, well, I don't think you could bait fish from this side anymore, the Yellow County side, it's off limits. You know, people leaving trash, things like that. They ruined it for everybody else. So you can't bait fish over there. But if you have a boat, bait fishing anywhere, we would stay on this side. And you only need to anchor. Again, if I'm bait fishing, we usually anchor maybe 20 to 30 feet off of the rocks. Not out here in the middle. We're like over here. Okay, because those stripers are going to use where those rocks meet that dirt, the bottom as a road to move up and down the river. You know, they don't want to be out there in no man's land in the middle, just roaming around in the mud. I mean, sure they can, but I feel like the majority of them 
just like a bass, is using it like a highway. They're using that where the rocks come down. And that's also where all the crayfish and the bait fish most of the time hang out because they could hide in that stuff. So you anchor close to the rocks. And this stretch from basically from this bend all the way in front of the marina here, all the way down to this area has paid huge for us over the years, you know, bait fishing for stripers this time of year. June, when the stripers have moved up, because remember they're moving from the ocean up river. So right now this is a great area to bait fish for stripers for like the next month or so. And then even way up, you know, up further, you could bait fish up, you know, Freeport, Mouth of the American, and so on and so forth. So that's that's pretty much bait fishing. Also up here in Minor Slough, we'd bait fish a ton right in the mouth of this slough. So if you, you know, where you're bait fishing, you really want to target areas where you think a lot of fish are going to be coming through and see your bait. Because you're not covering water, you're anchored. So you want to put the bait, you know, in a prime spot where a lot of fish will see it. So if you're thinking the stripers are coming up river, they're migrating up river, the mouths of these areas where they could possibly be coming in here or swimming up through here or up through here or up through here are going to be the best areas because the fish, it's a pinch point. They're going to have to swim through there. If your bait's out there, hopefully, you know, they swim by and you, and you get one of them. You get a big one. So that is about it. Oh, also, you really want to target, look at the tide. So I don't know, you can probably see up here, I have all these tidal prediction things because I'm getting ready for the uh, Wednesday night tournament. The tides are huge, so the stripers are usually going to bite the best at the beginning and the end of tide. So the end of incoming, beginning of outgoing. Beginning of incoming, the end of outgoing. That's when it's going to be best, that switch. Because on the switch, it goes from being slack, the fish are just kind of, you know, roaming around, to it starts to come in. Those fish are all going to have to position and move around. And that's when they're the most active. Same thing for the beginning and outgoing. Um, and then, you know, if it's been outgoing for five hours, four hours in the middle of that, they're not super active. You can still catch them, but they kind of position themselves. And on that tide switch, that's when they move around and get really active and feed. So that's about it for you guys. Hopefully you found some good information here that will help you guys out with uh, striper fishing. Uh, the Delta, like I said, we're not experts, but want to do something about striper fishing. We need to get out there and actually do it on the water video, but this will have to do for now. All right, well, hopefully you guys got uh, got some good information out of the striper video, and um, I'm all done rigging up. I'm probably still wiping down the boat from our last trip. I actually went out Saturday, didn't have the GoPro on me, had a decent day. Um, Caught topwater fish, caught different types of fish. So hopefully we have a good day Wednesday so you guys can see that. I'll try to break it down as good as possible while, you know, helping my son out fish or fish, you know, and probably taking off weeds and things like that. Um, but it should be a good time. So thanks for watching this video. Look out for the next one. It'll be the Wednesday night tournament coming up in a couple days. And I should have that out maybe a couple days after the fact. So Friday, Saturday, somewhere around there. And um, yeah. We really appreciate you guys watching, supporting the channel, and hopefully we keep putting out good content for you guys. And uh, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.